Welcome to another edition of Anglican Unscripted, episode 835. I'm Kevin Coulson. And I'm Father Brett Murphy, and today is December 19, 2023. All right, thank you for joining us for another program on Anglican Unscripted. As you can tell, I have a new guest this week. He agreed to do an interview with Anglican Unscripted because he, he's making the social media news. And uh, uh, before he gets arrested, you haven't been arrested yet, right? I thought I thought I'd have him on. <laughs> I thought I'd have him on for an interview. Uh, this is the uh, Reverend Brett Murphy, and you. I'm detecting an accent that is not fully uh, British. What's going on there? Yeah, I was a reject from the colony, so they sent me okay. back from Australia. So <laughs> <laughs> they want me in the penal colony. <laughs> so you were recently in the Church of England. Tell me a little bit about your history here. Well, uh, my wife and I felt the call of God to move to England in 2019. Uh, well, actually, late 2018, we made the big move in 19, um, and we had a sense of God calling us to lead dying churches in the city of E to revival. So we, we hit the ground running, and what we maybe, well, definitely me, with a bit of naivety and rose-colored glasses on, didn't realize was just how theologically corrupt uh, the C of E had become. Uh, and so I spent five years in the C of E uh, attempting to revive churches that had really were on the brink of death, uh, first way up north near Scotland and then in the Midlands. And then when uh, living in love and faith, the process of introducing uh, gay blessings was coming into the C of E, which I prefer to recall, uh, prefer to refer to it as living in lust and fornication. <laughs> uh, when that was coming in, uh, I had the Holy Spirit lay on my heart that I couldn't stay in, in any church that had apostatized to that level and was willing to bless what God called us in. So sought to leave and join GAFCON. And that's just what I did. But on the way out, uh, the CV, uh, certain people, uh, a, a cabal of very, very far left people decided to hit me with a lot of spurious disciplinary measures. Yeah, they did that with the Episcopal Church when uh, uh, priests wanted to go into the ACN at the time. Uh, uh, the current presiding bishop, Catherine Jeffrey Shorey, had defrocked 770 of them, or right about there. So that's kind of the uh, yeah. the status quo of the the enemy. Um, so I was your Facebook friend, and I was going through Facebook. Uh, which my wife says I do too often. I don't know what she's talking about. Me too. <laughs> and uh, boom, I, I saw an article you linked to, and you said, this fellow's a bloke. And <laughs> I, I knew he was a bloke, and you knew he was a bloke, but less, I have a large American audience and a large international audience. What does bloke mean as a definition? So in, Bloke just means man. It's a colloquialism for man. Yeah, yeah. particularly in Australia, we use it interchangeably. Um, Aussies mm -hmm. tend to call men blokes and women sheilas. So right. I, I, it's just my Aussieisms. Okay, uh, what happened when you do that? <laughs> All hell broke loose. That's what happened. So I, you know, while I was still in the Church of England at the time, still a, 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 a functioning priest with you know PTO and a license, uh, I started under God's, really under God's instruction, I felt the call of the Lord to make commentary on my YouTube channel on things that were happening in the CV. Uh, in, in perhaps a little little naive yet again, trying to think that I could turn the tide, you know, to, to start to bring back biblical orthodoxy. So the platform grew uh, greatly to my surprise. Uh, I think you know, I had like 20 views on a sermon I put on YouTube and suddenly I was getting 150,000 on these videos or something like that, something wacky. And in the course of making those videos, I started covering um, Anglican stories mostly that interested me or that were quite shocking. And one cropped up that was sent to me by a friend that in the Diocese of Manchester earlier this year, about the middle of the year, they had appointed their first ever transgender archdeacon. Um, and so uh, I thought this is, this is a fairly controversial moment. So I made this vlog, and I really just, the, the reason I made the vlog was to ask the genuine question, to use the platform to ask the genuine question, how on earth will this man, uh, who ironically is called 
Rachel Mann. H how will Mr. Mann actually pastor and lead as an archdeacon the conservative traditionalist Anglicans under his care? And of course, I never got an answer to that. Um, but it was, I think, a genuine question. And in the course of that video, I referred to him as a matter of principle by his biological sex. Um, you know, I believe scriptural teaching that God makes men and women. And then that is when, uh, really, I think I in, it really inspired the rage of a, a group of some very, very liberal, progressive, unpleasant Church of England, one of whom um, made a formal complaint against me, which is... You came back, you're um, back. I came back, hallelujah, <laughs> I've returned. Um, and the CDM basically is the most serious uh, discipline for misconduct that you can have against a clergyman. Now, they really should only ever be used for exactly that, for, for you know, um, child molesters or horrible abusers and bullies and things like that. They should not be used just to enforce someone's progressive ideology. But that's pretty much what happened. So they, they took issue to me misgendering. I don't believe in misgendering. I think it's a make-believe term. But, you know, a man's a man, a woman's a woman. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I had recently had a neighbor who was transgendered, and uh, we would get together frequently in, in groups here in the uh, f uh, neighborhood that I am part of, and uh, I would, according to him, misgender him frequently. He wanted to be a she, and uh, he would wear the makeup and the wig, and uh, he was not a Christian, so I would explain this in Christian terms, that I, I know that you want to be a woman, but in, you're trying to correct Kevin, and if you don't believe in uh, Christianity, you probably believe in evolution. You can't undo 15,000 years of evolution uh, that created Kevin's brain. I'm going to call you a man because when I look at you, I see a man. And there's just nothing you can yeah. do about that. And he finally, uh, should I give his name? No, I'm not going to give his name. He finally acquiesced to that and uh, uh, moved away last year. But, you know, what, what are you trying to do here to make your gender uh, permanent? And mandatory. Mm. And exactly. And why should everyone else have to acquiesce to mm -hmm. someone else's delusions? I mean, we, people will have labelled me uh, a lot of nasty things. I don't mind. You know, blessed are ye when men persecute you and revile you for my name's sake. But one of the things they say is I'm transphobic. Well, I'm not. I'm not afraid of trans people. I don't hate trans people. I just hold a different worldview, worldview based on the scripture, like you do. And I think that you know, like with your neighbour. Uh, or with Mr. Man, if I were to refer to them by their preferred pronoun and gender, which I believe is a delusion, I would be com actually lying, and I, I would be defying God's word, and I, I won't do it. I just won't do it. I won't be compelled to to, to do that. Uh, no matter what they throw at me, I just will not back off from it. This or any other matter of truth. Um, it's it's not just sort of picking on the trans issue. It's a, it's a matter of truth versus untruth. And biological fact and biblical truth dovetailing perfectly together in this situation. So I'm just not going to back off from it. Um, I, I don't know if they think I am. Well, we know from the Apostle Paul that love delights in the truth. Okay. And, Amen. And, yeah. and if you're going to sit here and have me as a friend, uh, and I do love you, I'm going to tell you the truth. You're not going to like it. And, uh, you know... And if it causes an end to our friendship, please know that I did it because I do love you, as described in the New Testament. You know, that's what love is, telling the truth. Yeah. So. Exactly, yeah, that's that's a, a good scriptural definition of love. And it's it's I often say to people, it's unloving to indulge people in error, whatever that error is. It's the same if somebody was engaged in full-blown heresy. It would be your duty as a Christian. Uh, firstly, for the purity of the gospel, but secondly, because you don't want that person to face the judgment of Almighty God whilst they're living in a lie. It's, it's, it, you know, it's 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 out of compassion and care that we do these things. Obviously, like I said, I don't see it that way. Um, but to, to be censored by a, an organization or attempted to be censored by an organization that still purports to be Christian, still calls itself a church, that is, to me, the greatest insult of all. I mean... We're supposed to have, well, I'm not in the sea of anymore, but we were supposed to have uh, this thing called mutual flourishing. 
And we're all allowed to have, you know, subjective opinions. We're all allowed to have our own, our own personal truth. And you can hold your truth and I can hold my... Well, that's actually conceded to in the response to this complaint. So at the time, the complaint was dealt with by uh, Bishop Saju Mathalali, who's the Bishop of uh, Loughborough, which is a suffragan of uh, Leicester Diocese. And in his response letter, I mean, he's very clear that actually he doesn't like what I said or how I said it. But he concedes, I actually have a right to hold the opinion and express it. So how they could therefore then go and appeal this and then reopen the case when it's, it's abundantly clear I had, you know, the, the right of freedom of speech. And this, up until LLF passed, was in fact the official position of the Church of England. Yeah. How on earth that can possibly, how you can be disciplined under a disciplinary measure for doing absolutely nothing wrong, not breaking any rules, is completely beyond me. Well, I mean, that's the, the biggest hypocrisy we've seen for the Church of England, whether it be a uh, professor being fired, whether it be Calvin Robinson uh, having to seek employment elsewhere, uh, yourself. You know, there's these cases where people have come up against this, this pendulum of liberalism, and there just doesn't seem to be any end to the swing of this pendulum. But I'm starting to see a little bit. I'm starting to see that, you know, Oh, Switzerland, France, Netherlands, all these countries are saying, oh, we're not letting uh, kids get transgendered surgeries anymore. Oh, the pendulum's coming back a little bit. Oh, and, uh, you know, so in as such, is, have, we, have you seen a point now where this pendulum is starting to swing back a little bit? I think we are. I think we're beginning to see a turning point in, in the West, um, even in the UK, just this week, they broke the news that the government's releasing new guideline on, uh, guidelines for schools and for public education so that actually it's going to be now taken as an assumption that a student cannot change their gender and that staff and colleagues are under no obligation, no obligation <laughs> whatsoever to indulge in their pronouns. Well, that Okay, so the pendulum went all the way over here. Uh, that's Boing. quite a swing. That's quite a swing. <laughs> Uh, I, I had not heard that. That's interesting. So uh, all this uh, fake uh, off offense of the last uh, seven, eight years in England, I'm offended that you're not using mm -hmm. my, my preferred gender, is no longer going to be uh, acquiesced to at the school level. Yeah, and, and that, that, of course, has been one of the major backgrounds, you know, for the future, the future generations. And I mean, obviously, there's still a lot of work garbage peddled in, in the school system, but at least now, what has been basically the official position of the UK government has been that you must comply with these demands of these people uh, who are, you know, gender confused. Now, you don't have to. And I got to thinking this morning, well, if that's the case, if that's the way that the UK government's gone, w will the C of E be offering me an apology? Because... Uh, Apparently, the rules now say that you're, you're okay to do that. You're okay to misgender. Um, whereas one of the arguments in the complaint originally was, oh, you know, uh, what if he turns up at a school, you know, you know, because they're often invited to schools, and there's a trans student and he won't identify their gender. How will that young person deal with that, et cetera, et cetera? Um, well, it's a, it's a moot point. It seems, like, it seems to me the whole thing's just a, a, a kangaroo court. And of course, it has no actual meaning on me, Kevin, anymore. <laughs> well, it, I'm out. I mean, that's gone. It's yeah. Well, you're out, but it, it it does though. You know, you were spiritually abused, and that does have. Well, that's uh, true. Yes. Okay, that does have meaning. You were bullied by bishops and clergy within uh, a previous uh, denomination that you were employed by, and that does have an effect yeah. on you going forward. Now, you will grow from it. Uh, I, I speak as an elder here, you know. What, what doesn't kill you in the church will make you stronger. Uh, but in, in that, um, you were able to move to a, a GAFCON, uh, a, a safe location within the borders of the UK. How's that working out? Mm. Uh, it's been the biggest blessing of my life uh, thus far. It's, it's in my ministry, it's been amazing. Um, for my wife as well and the kids, uh, the Lord's been very, very gracious to us. So we took on uh, Emmanuel Church in the Free Church of England, which is in Morecambe, which is sort of far northwest of England. Uh, and we arrived at a fairly derelict church with only two elderly parishioners left 
the rest of them had just sort of wow. passed away from natural sure. atrophy. And I'm very, very grateful to God uh, to say that we are now at an average of about 30 every Sunday in just four months. And our Christmas carols on Sunday, uh, I think we had 70 people. So, I mean, God is very good. And I think that's part of the pendulum swing. Yes, people is, yeah. in the churches are dead sick of woke garbage. They're just fleeing churches that are woke. And people in the culture come into this church because uh, we have a lot of front porch ministries and outreaches. And people come into the church. Like I do a cafe morning and people come and talk to me as the pastor. And they, they say, you know, what does your church stand for? And, you know, I just do what I say on the tin. And they say, oh, at last, a church that actually believes the Bible. And some of these people aren't Christian. Yeah. They're, you know, they're, they're not actually converted, but they want the church to be the church, not whatever the C of E has devolved into. Yeah, I mean, for a lot of these people, and especially people who grew up in Lord of the Rings era, reading the books, know that there's a good and an evil, you know, and mm -hmm. in fiction and in real life, and all of a sudden, all they see is evil. Where's the good? Well, the Church of England abandoned yeah. it. You know, so I I can see that there's no contrast in your life. Uh, gaff guns are to help. Uh, clearly, uh, it's a long road for for gaff kind to get a foothold there. That's tough ground. It is. It is. It's tough ground. And uh, reclaiming the, the genuine Anglicanism is a big thing because when people hear the word Anglican, uh, they, they, they think C of E. Yeah. So our, our, um, our mission tagline on our, on our church, on all our promotional stuff, is Biblical Orthodox Anglican. And a load of people have said to me, that's actually very refreshing. It's actually attracted people. They've seen it on the posters and the signboard. And they said, wow, you, you literally are just putting it on the tin. But the first thing they ask is, but are you part of the C of A? And my answer is, no. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Well, I mean, the, and we've arrived in 2023 at the end of the age of ruined brands. The Episcopal Church is a ruined brand. Uh, the Anglican Church mm -hmm. is, a, you know, thanks to Justin Welby, is a ruined brand. Oh, and as of yesterday, the Roman Catholic Church is a ruined brand. And uh, after I record They're with you, I, I have to go record with George and do a show on uh, on the Roman Catholic Church. Oh, joy. I want to thank you so much for your time, and I'm glad we got to introduce you to the audience. Uh, where can they go online? Where can I provide links to so they can find out more about the Reverend Brett Murphy? Excellent. If they want to uh, search on Facebook, Rev Brett Murphy, or Twitter, they'll find me. Uh, on YouTube, it's the same name, Rev Brett Murphy. And if they're interested in my church, they can search for Emmanuel Church Morecambe on Facebook as well. All right. Thank you and God bless. Thank you, Kevin. God bless you too, brother. <laughs>